With one watcher distracted and the other bribed, the Avid Horizon scrapes open. A crack just big enough for a person. A swamp green light spills out, gloomy and comforting. Finally, after weeks of being pursued by the fire that follows, refuge is only a few steps away. The earnest agitator takes Elizabeth's hand and leads her through. Elizabeth grabs Langley's hand and pulls him in too, not wanting to wait a second longer in case the opportunity is lost forever. The door shutters closed after them. On the other side is something Elizabeth and the earnest agitator haven't seen since they both left for the skies so many years ago. The Neath. All three of them spent a cold few hours waiting outside the frozen gate until they got the attention of a passing boat. The captain was happy to take them in exchange for stories from the sky. They were ferried to fall in London. It used to be Elizabeth's home as a child, but now it's unrecognizable. Most Londoners left for the skies before the Avid Horizon was closed. It's not a dead city, though. There's people going about their day, and stalls selling some food none of the three have ever seen before. Not everyone left for the skies, of course. Some Londoners stayed behind because they were scared. The Neath is a scary and unforgiving place, but they had grown up in it. They understood it. The skies weren't worth the risk. They had a life they liked, and they wanted to keep it. Some stayed behind because they couldn't afford it. Moving your entire life is expensive, and her renewed majesty didn't care to help the less fortunate join them in the skies. If anything, she was happy to be rid of them. And most people just weren't Londoners. Fallen London is only a small part of the Neath. Important, but not necessary for the dozens of other communities to function. The sudden absence of the higher classes left a power vacuum. Almost everyone in a position of authority had left, and thousands of buildings sat empty. The poor realized that there was nothing stopping them from doing with the city as they saw fit. So they changed the entire political landscape. The people left behind banded together to help each other through a time when everything was up in the air. The homeless took the newly vacated homes. Many went from living on the streets to living in mansions. Food was never very scarce to begin with, only unfairly distributed, but the sudden absence of thousands of mouths only made it more abundant. With almost all the landlords gone, people stopped paying for a place to live. Money became an afterthought, a habit, not a requirement for life. Farmers, hunters, and fishers gave their food away to people who needed it, and those people helped them when they needed it. A broken staircase, a leaky pipe, new clothes, there was an influx of devils, clay men, rubbery men, and others that used to be occasionally spotted in London. Now they could be seen everywhere. With so much space, many people flocked there for a place to live. A place where they could shape the regrowth of a city and be heard. Elizabeth, Langley, and the earnest agitator have come back to a city reborn. London fell, and now it has risen. All three of them found a place to live together. The earnest agitator needed time to recuperate from her ordeal with a fire that follows. Months later, she had put on some weight and regained much of her strength. Her mental health was slower to recover, but with the help of Elizabeth and a kind city, she was managing to heal that too. She was done with adventuring. Now she wanted to settle down, so she started writing a book to chronicle all that had happened. Years later, when the book was finished and released, it sent waves through the public and scholarly spheres. When people learned about judgments and correspondence and messengers and the fire that follows, they realized they had unwittingly dodged a bullet by staying behind. Scholars had been desperately trying to understand the fiery symbols seen around the Untersee. Thanks to the book, the earnest agitator was in high demand among researchers. Because of her help, and some consulting with Elizabeth to fill in the gaps, 
the Z scholar's understanding of the sun gods blossomed. Langley's life had turned completely upside down. He had spent years languishing in an obscure room of Langley Hall, alone and mourning the loss of his love, only the tiniest fraction of hope that they would ever be reunited. And now, in just a few months, Langley found his lover and fled with them to the Neath. Langley never thought the person searching for his lost love would be the lost love themselves. Neither did Elizabeth. Elizabeth and Langley's relationship was odd. After settling into fallen London, they had a chance to actually get to know each other. They both felt a strong bond to one another, like they'd been in a relationship for decades, but they barely knew each other at all. It was part honeymoon and part first date. A few years later, they got married. The perfect pangolin was the ring bearer. For Elizabeth, the darkness of the Neath was a comfort. Even so, it took years for her to truly feel safe from the judgments. The renewed fallen London fit her perfectly. For once, her revolutionary thoughts weren't revolutionary at all here. She worked alongside like-minded people to better the city and helped plant seeds of revolution in other cities. Her adventurous spirit was satisfied with the occasional outing into the Z. Langley joined her on these and brought life to the ship with his skills as a pianist. Recently, his playing had become buoyant and lively. That made Elizabeth happy. When alone, she would spend hours gazing up at the false stars on the cavern roof. 